Good evening and, uh, and welcome. And thank you guys for taking time out of your busy schedules to attend tonight's board uh, trustees meeting. Now, we're here tonight to talk about a special charity for next year. And I'm going to um, you know, take you through some slides and, and kind of get you familiar with what it is. But first, I want to just acknowledge that there's plenty of charities that we could have you know, that we could choose from. But coming from a family of educators, I've heard so much about how schools are underfunded and how teachers, you know, really don't have the means to, you know, to educate their kids as best as possible. So I found a great organization. But does anybody know how much teachers currently spend out of pocket every year on school supplies? Any guesses? A lot. A lot. Well, actually, they spend about three hundred fifty-six dollars per teacher combined. It's about a billion dollars. Now, if you or not, the URI has a business expense, we can easily go to our boss and get a reimbursement. But for teachers, it's rather difficult. And as Rotarians, I think that we really should tackle this problem. So we're going to do that through a group called Donors Choose. And it's my hope that by the end of the evening, we're all going to feel energized and we're going to feel inspired to have a year of meaningful giving. Now, I know some of you guys are probably thinking, well, we already spent we already spent a lot of money in our schools, and you know there's no way that teachers are spending that kind of money, you know, on their own. Um, but I just want to point out something. So even though we are spending a lot of money, if you take a look here. These these are uh, these numbers all compare to Trenton. Now Trenton is an Abbott district, meaning they get extra funds from the state per year. They spend sixteen thousand dollars per student. If you go up this column here, these are other Mercer County high schools or it's in school districts. This is how much less each of those spends. At the same time, these are the actual averages that the students in Trenton are scoring on SATs. All these numbers here represent how much more these school districts are doing. So basically the point of this is to show you that spending money doesn't necessarily equate with educational achievement. Um, but to me, the way I look at it is Maybe there's a better, a better way that we can get teachers um, you know, more involved with how funds are spent. Because after all, they're the ones that are in the class with the kids. Um, you know, and even today, with budgets that are, that are tightening, um, teachers are having a really difficult time. So we're going to see in a little bit how uh, Donors Choose is trying to tackle this problem. Right now, we're going to take a look at a classroom, and I want you guys to just give me some feedback as to what you can or what you notice as to what you notice um, sorry. Okay. So this classroom happens to be from a relatively affluent suburban school district. Can anyone just point out things that you know might be beneficial to the students that you probably wouldn't find in every other school? Projector. Okay, so we have the projector here. Anything else? Laptop. We got laptops. Or what you say? Or iPad that can tell that is in the back left. Oh yeah, here we have the <laughs> laptop. So this is where the teacher stands and she's able to you know control just like this. Um, she can control what's on the smart board. Uh, anything else? <laughs> and let me just go to another picture. And he, this one's pretty obvious. Computers. Yep, we have all these computers here. And there's actually another one, there's a printer. And you might not notice this thing right here, but what this is, it's a, a speaker system that allows uh, my wife to walk around her classroom with a microphone on. So if there's any kids in their class that have trouble hearing, they'll be able to hear. Um, so, how would having those kind of things benefit the kids, like in their class. Anybody? The teacher can actually show them how to do something instead of just having to try to explain it. Right, so, she can, so they can demonstrate things. Anything else? I guess by having a speaker system, they can find a way to incorporate that and um, excite the senses of all the children. Right, so the speakers, and then it's, yeah. So it's not just for the, for the kids that might, might be hard of hearing, but it's for all, all the students. The interaction. The interaction, exactly. I mean, we're, she, can do, she can do exactly what we're doing right now. Anything else? Um, 
anyway, I mean, the main point of this is just to, to give you an idea of you know what some school districts have, and the fact that there are plenty of school districts out there that are lacking. So I'm going to go back to. We're going to go back to this. I'm going to show you a, a video that actually comes from donors too, so you can get a better idea of why we should support this charity. There are few times in history when the saying, we're all in this together, would be more applicable than right now. Charles Best, he came up with a revolutionary idea during lunch in the teacher's lounge. My colleagues and I were talking about books that we wanted our students to read, field trips we wanted to take them on, art supplies that we needed, but these ideas wouldn't beyond the teacher's lunchroom. And then I just figured that there were people from all walks of life who wanted to help improve our public schools. Through Donors Choose, ordinary citizens can directly fund projects initiated by enterprising public school teachers. Teachers request dictionaries, science kits, field trips, resources that their students need to thrive. Then you can give to the project request that most inspires you for the donation of any amount. And DonorsChoose.org delivers the materials to the school it's such a simple, wonderful idea. It connects individual donors with individual classrooms and individual teachers and individual projects. You know exactly who you're helping and how you're helping them. It's tough getting dollars. I don't like to give them all away, so if I do, I'd like to know where it's going. When I started teaching last year, I didn't have any books for my students. They put the supplies in my classroom within two weeks. And our class in the Bronx had no paintbrushes and now every single student has a set. We took a picture from the beginning of the year and now it's like empty and full. <laughs> Here's a donor can expect to get photographs of the activity taking place, student thank you notes, a teacher impact letter, illustrating, proving the impact that you've had. Well, thank you, Carson, from the children. We're going to stop here. Um, right now, I, I want to show you how exactly this works. So what I have here is a, a screenshot of a specific project this happens to be of a middle school in, um, in Trenton. And what the teacher is looking for is for his classroom to be outfitted with a projector like the one we have here. So let me just tell you why. I'm going to read a, read a quote. So the teacher, Mr. Slam, he explains, my students are bilingual, but are mostly Spanish speaking. And not being that literate, they react more positively to pictures, maps, and diagrams to learn than to pages in a book. If I ask them to read, they are shy and do not volunteer. However, if I show a picture, they become quite excited in explaining what they see. Now, he goes on to, to talk about the fact that if he wants to take them on a field trip, you know, to show them something in a museum, a lot of times he's not able to do that because the kids don't have the funds. So, you know, having this projector, he'd be able to, you know, take a, you know, an image of, I don't know, the Declaration of Independence, something like that. He can put it up on the board. Instead of having to have all the students come in the huddle around one computer. It would be pretty difficult for you guys to all you know, watch this presentation all standing around me over here, right? So anyway, I think it's a, a great organization, but I'm sure that like all the other organizations we look at, we want to make sure that it's credible. So the first thing is, as you saw in the video, the, the organization, they actually make sure that what's being requested on their website is, is legitimate and that the cost of you know, in this case, the projector, that the cost is, is true. Um, the, sec the second thing, which I think is very important, is if you look at the people who are already supporting them, um, you know, it speaks volumes. Right now, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, who is one of our biggest supporters as Rotarians, they're a huge supporter of this group. Um, the, other, the other important thing is um, there's a website called Charity Navigator, which uh, Kiplinger as rated as the best charity review site. They rank Donors Choose as having four stars, the highest ranking. It's also the same ranking that they gave to Rotary's foundation. And last but not least, they have a proven track record. Since 2000, they've been able to help over 200,000 classrooms, which equates to five million school kids. So, you know, I, I, I think that it's a, it's a great organization, and if we were able to participate, and in this case, if we were to you know, buy that projector or you know, to help a kid go on a field trip. Do you guys remember from the video what would happen? Anybody? Well, I'll show you. They'll, the, the kids are, are going to send pictures of how whatever you help get into their classroom, how, how they can use it, and they're going to send you thank you notes, which I think would encourage us to continue 
you know, supporting you know, different projects. It doesn't have to be the trend. It can be anywhere. If you go on their website, you know, as we'll do this upcoming year, you'll see how many projects are out there. Um, I hope you guys feel as excited as I am about Donors Choose. And um, since uh, this is our special meeting, I'm going to uh, call or ask if anyone wants to close the meeting. Do you have any motions to close? Anybody? Just say yes. That's all you have to do. Yes. yes. All right. <laughs> meeting is closed. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.